evening and welcome to Up South for all the top news stories from South India with me T.S. Sudhir. A top news story this evening is from Karnataka where its tourism minister R.V. Deshpande clearly thinks he is a law unto himself. He was upset with the Goa government's decision to demolish illegal hutsments on Baina Beach in Vasco and Goa which are mostly inhabited from people from Karnataka. But then he reportedly said this and this has become extremely controversial because R.B. Deshpande said that Goa should not forget that if it harasses people from Karnataka then they should not forget that there are 15,000 to 20,000 IT professionals who are working in Bengaluru. So just what is on the IT minister's mind from Karnataka? Joining me is Mr. R.B. Deshpande, the tourism minister of Karnataka. Mr. Deshpande, you have said and I quote you that if you start harassing people from Karnataka in Goa, do not forget that there are 15,000 to 20,000 Goan IT professionals who are working in Bengaluru. What did you mean by that? What will you do to those Goans who are working in Bangalore, Bengaluru's IT companies? Understand, I have been in active politics for more than four decades. In my life, okay. you see your news channels or the press. I have never used such languages. This anybody who uses this language is not a person secular and not a person fit to be in public life. When I, I had a very nice meeting, cordial meeting with the honorable chiefs of Goa, Mr. Pratap Singh Rane, the official leader, and others were there. And when we came out of the meeting, the chief minister went for another program. There were journalists and uh, TV channels from Karnataka also, that is from Karwa, or 15-20 of them. They have not quoted this. They have not written any story about this. There were three, four people from Goa. Okay. I don't know who they are. I came to know today there is one of them was PTI, because everybody relied on PTI news. Maybe this, you talk about Times of India, or ACNH, or whatever paper, three, four, paper, Economic Times. See what? Okay. They told me to talk in Kokani. You want me also talking Kokani? You want English? So I said in Kokani that I see Goa and Karnataka have a strong bondage of relationship. We have excellent relationship. Karnatakas are here in Goa. Likewise, IT professionals are also 15-20,000 working in Karnataka, Bangalore. And our relations are good. Once I said this, one journalist, I don't know who, he jumped on me and said, if so, then why on Madai River project you are creating problems? I said, I am not supposed to answer this question. We are not creating any problem to anybody. This matter is in courts and tribunals. And secondly, I don't answer this. I have come on a specific mission of by now. Rehabilitation. That is the story. Nothing more was heard. Nothing more attacked. And then I right. looked at my people who had come from Karnataka and told them again in Karnataka, Kannada, what I had to tell. Nothing more than this. So what this statement is, I don't know why this PTI did it. I don't want to blame anybody, but it is a misquoted statement. Far from truth. Right. So Mr. Deshpande, you have been saying that you have been essentially misquoted by the press there in Goa. But again, you should try to solve this issue by sitting across the table, uh, not by kind of making a statement which is then interpreted rightly or wrongly as saying that if you harm Karnatakas here, there are Goans in my backyard also. Because obviously you have taken oath under the constitution of India, not again under the constitution of Karnataka or the constitution in Bengaluru. Please understand, I had a meeting with the Chief Minister, a very cordial meeting. Chief was very nice. He said, this morning, I will try to, I also understand who I am talking to. You are also an elderly man. I will take your advice also. I will talk to Pratap Singh Rane, the leader of opposition, as early as possible, and try to find out a solution to this problem. I told him, 85 or 84 houses you demolished recently. Other area, not my area. You are rehabilitating them. Likewise, why not you rehabilitate them? Rehabilitate them and do whatever it is. Other 75 people last year they did, they promised rehabilitation, nothing has happened. See, they are in the streets. Right. And most of them are on Kardigas. I am not saying that only Kardigas should be protected. I said everybody should be protected. They are poor and our concern should be more for the poor. That is our duty, I said. Right. Uh, Mr. Arvi Deshpande, thanks for joining us with that clarification. Mr. Deshpande, they are saying that he was misquoted and he never attempted to say that he, 
the go and IT professionals who are working in the city of Bengaluru would be under any kind of threat. But then Karnataka is also having a problem with Tamil Nadu. And that's an age-old problem over the contentious and extremely emotional Kaveri River dispute. The pro-Kanada organizations have called for a band in Karnataka tomorrow to protest against the Tamil Nadu government's decision to try and stall the drinking water project that is going to be constructed over the Kaveri River. The Tamil, Tamil Nadu state also on Mar March 28 had observed a band protesting against Karnataka's move to build a dam across the Kaveri in Mekedatu. Joining me now on the phone line is my colleague Pratibha Raman. Pratibha, there isn't any political support to the Bandh call given by different pro kanada organizations tomorrow. What are the different political parties there in Karnataka saying about this? Well, the different political uh, parties are really keeping mum with regards to uh, the Bandh that has been called by at least about 18 uh, pro kanada groups. And uh, the main demand by these Kannada groups is the fact that Karnataka government is not really being firm in terms of taking on the Tamil Nadu government. In fact, they've gone ahead and uh, given them a deadline of at least 30 days to lay the foundation stone for uh, one of the projects, the drinking project, as well as the power project that uh, they're planning to do at the Make It Art Dam. And uh, they're also planning to hold a rally from uh, Town Hall in Bangalore to another place called the Freedom Park in Bangalore. So these are the kind of attempts to suggest that the Karnataka government must really act firm. But at this point in time, the Karnataka government is not really reacting to uh, either the uh, Kannada organization's demands, nor even talking to the media about it. So these. Right. Um, uh... Mr. R. Mani, political analyst and senior journalist, also with us from Chennai. Mr. Mani, now Karnataka outfits calling for a band over the Kaveri. Tamil Nadu had done a similar thing on the 28th of March. Do you get the feeling that passions are now being kind of aroused over what is an extremely emotional issue that we have seen in the past? This is a long pending issue. Uh, usually the tussle will break out during the months of June or July when Tamil Nadu used to demand the release of water and Karnataka saying no. But that's, this time the right. fight is uh, on a different issue which is uh, the proposed construction of a check dam across the river Kaveri near Mekatadu. In fact, in a rare show of integrity or solidarity, Tamil Nadu MPs have met the Prime Minister some time back and insisted upon, insisted upon him not to allow Karnataka to do so. And the environmental minister Prakash Javadekar said that there was no permission sought by the Karnataka government and the environmentalists were also opposing the move by the Karnataka. Uh, but as far as the main issue is concerned, I think uh, there is no such uh, attempts from either side as of now, as of now to rouse uh, patients. In fact, it's a good one. But we don't know what will happen uh, in the coming months. That's we have to wait and see. Right. Uh Mr. Mani, hold on with us. We will be coming back to you for the Jelta story. Pratibha Raman, thanks a lot for joining us there from Bengaluru. Now, Jayalatha's bail has been extended till the 12th of May. Remember, she was given bail uh, last year after she was convicted in the disproportionate assets case by a special court in Bengaluru on the 27th of September. Only this week, there was also a split verdict in the Supreme Court over whether special public prosecutor Bhavani Singh should be allowed to continue in the trial which is taking place before the Karnataka court. Now, if the larger Supreme Court three-judge bench approves the appointment of the special public prosecutor by the first week of May, then the Karnataka High Court could even deliver the verdict on Jailatha's appeal. But if the Supreme Court says Bhavani Singh's appointment is illegal, then the Jailatha case will have to be argued all over again in the Karnataka High Court. Now at the moment arguments are over and the Karnataka High Court has reserved its judgment. So that means that Jailatha will be on bail till verdict is given by the Karnataka High Court. Mr. R. Mani is still with us from Chennai. Mr. Mani, Jayalta's bail getting extended. Now, do you also sense some kind of restlessness in the Jayalta camp? We have seen a whole lot of prayers and pujas being organized in different temples and churches and mosques all over Tamil Nadu. Because delaying the word, it will mean Jayalta will get that much less time to actually come out in the public and even begin campaigning to an extent because elections in Tamil Nadu are exactly a year away. You know, this uh, decision of the Supreme Court today is an expected one. Supreme Court will generally, once after it gave bail, it will, will use to extend it uh, till the disposal of the case. Uh, so, the bail extension is not an, um, you know, uh, surprising one. The main issue is that uh, the disposal of uh, 
the, the petition of the Supreme Court, wherein uh, the Anbaragan DMK General Secretary um, challenging the appointment of Bhavani Singh, public prosecutor in the Jayalta's case. After the split verdict uh, last 15th in the Supreme Court, the, yesterday night, the Chief Justice has actually constituted a three-judge bench to go into the matter and it will start its hearing by April 21st. Now, we have to wait what the bench is, uh, three-judge bench is going to say. Only after that only the main judgment in the Kannada High Court is going to come. But uh, whether this will affect the chances of uh, ADMK going for a full-fledged campaign with the people or not or all, I think very uh, premature one because elections are far away. One, elections are due to take place only in 2016. But undoubtedly, this has created a, some sort of a restlessness in ADMK's camp. That's true. Right. Um, my colleague Shisha Reddy is also with me from Chennai. Shisha, what have been the reactions that you are getting from the DMK camp? Because though Mr. Armani says that elections are still one year away, there have been kind of mini campaigning which has already started by leaders in the DMK especially. So what are the reactions you are getting from the other opposition parties like the DMK, the MDMK and the PMK? Well, uh, Sudhir, as far as the PMK is concerned, PMK has already gone ahead and announced the chief minister candidate for Tamil Nadu. And however, the DMK is uh, was strong enough uh, talking about uh, how a convicted person has been handling all the issues as far as the state is concerned. And also the ADMK uh, uh, having been uh, speaking in uh, uh, voices that the two chief ministers, in fact, uh, people's chief minister and the other chief minister was uh, uh, occupying the state cabinet. So, yes, the DMK has been... Uh, uh, very vociferous in uh, putting their points across as far as the entire case is concerned. But now this coming as uh, a relief to Jalita is not seen, uh, uh, you know, gone down with the DMK. Of course, uh, they have been, uh, you know, saying that, uh, you know, they, what, what is going to come out in the, in the court will be something that they will have to wait and watch as far as this particular case is concerned. Right. Uh, Mr. R. Mani and Shisha Reddy, thanks a lot for joining us. Shisha, we'll come back to you for the other story on Mani Ratnam's O, o Kadal Kanmani. Thanks a lot, Mr. Money, for joining us. Now, the Telangana government has culled over 1,20,000 poultry birds in the Rangaradi district of Telangana. It has also destroyed over 82,000 eggs. This after the threat of an avian influenza in the Rangaradi district and that's also in a very particular epicenter, a particular village in the Rangaradi district of Telangana. There were estimated close to one and a half lakh poultry birds in that specific area of the district where the outbreak has been noticed. Five samples were confirmed positive after which the decision to cull birds was taken. Now Telangana is a major egg producing state producing six crore eggs every day with a poultry population of nearly seven crore birds. Joining me now from Hyderabad is my colleague Rohini Swami. Rohini, what has been the reaction from the restaurant owners? Has the scare affected the footfalls in their eateries? Yes, so there is a general scare because of the bird flu outbreak in Telangana. But uh, people do say that they do go out and eat, and certain and hoteliers also say that there are certain precautions that they take, especially to, uh, to see that, uh, especially when they're serving it to people are here. I'm joined by Pankaj. Pankaj, if I can ask you the precautions that you all take, because uh, when it comes to Hyderabad biryani and even your place, Paradise, That's is synonymous. Oh, so, yes. how, what kind of precautions do you all take? Uh, the precautions we have taken is that we get our birds from a very reliable form, uh, farm and this farm has issued a certificate certifying that it is safe to procure from them. Coming back to the property, the chicken which comes in, the birds which come in over here are thoroughly washed in clean running water. They are sanitized using a 50 ppm chlorine water and thereafter they are rinsed again in cold water so that you know there's no traces of any bacteria or viruses which are there in the food for them to be alive. And then the cooking process, it's a thoroughly done process wherein everything gets cooked. And the turnover is so fast that, you know, we don't store any food. So the food that is cooked for today is over by the day itself. And also these are the specifications that have been approved by the health department so that they have also, and you've circulated this amongst your other properties too. That's right. I've circulated a letter saying, you know, all the precautions that have to be taken. And the managers and the chefs are following the same. You've done your bit, but let me also talk to a couple of customers if I can ask you specifically, uh, there is a fear of bird flu around, but you're here and I can see you, you're eating chicken also for that. Don't you fear the fact or do you feel that if you come to safer places, you'll, you'll, the food will be given to you as hygienic? 
Yeah, in, in places like Badass, uh, I, I, I think the, the food will be hygienic and compared to other places. So I don't think I don't have to really fear about it. Yes. But that means you would not go and look at other places, or would you? When you heard about it, did you stay away and say, okay, no chicken for a while? Uh, actually, the flu came out uh, a few days back, so I, I'm eating chicken from the last one week. It's a continuous process for me right now. So, but uh, I, I prefer going to places which I think uh, are hygienic, like Paris and some other places. I'm not going to places which I don't think they really uh, serve hygienic food or something like that. Outbreak is still on, but uh, the fact is that the, in, even though the precautions are being taken, people do say some of them try to refrain from eating it. But some, like you have seen here, very clearly, the customers saying that they would continue to eat. But the point is that what they're trying to do is also, uh, if uh, the chicken is boiled to a certain uh, degree Celsius or certain uh, uh, temperature, then they say that they can right. control the germs, and they also source it from safe places. So uh, there is not much fear, but people continue to gorge on their lovely chicken biryani as and when they want. Now, a Bengaluru-based company, Wings Enterprises Private Limited, today launched a national portal to provide employment opportunities for the sexual minorities. Apart from listing job opportunities, the portal staff would also appoint transgender, transgender agents in each city to help job seekers from the community. The portal is open to everyone seeking employment. Agents would also be appointed in semi-urban and rural areas to assist those who do not have access to the internet. From my, uh, my organization, that's Bundari, we talk about dignity of sexual minorities, children and women. 1008jobs.com is one of the great opportunity in the entire country. For the first time, they're speaking about sexual minorities. It's it's completely it's completely it's completely it's, irre it's irrelevant of your caste, class, gender, sexuality, ethnicity, etc. They're just talking about human beings. And before we end, a quick programming note. Watch our special report, Hyderabad Racket Advantage India, on the two world number one from the city of Hyderabad, Sana Nehwal and Sania Mirza. That's it then on Up South. This Friday evening news and updates will continue on Headlines Today.